Greetings everybody. Let's take a look now at kind of this connection between irrotational vector fields and conservative vector fields. So kind of coming back to this map that we've seen um, before that we've got this connection between a conservative vector field looking like the gradient of some potential function. Then we've got path independence that it doesn't matter that our line integrals um, the value of our line integrals don't really depend on the path that we take between two points. They only depend on the endpoints. And so our fundamental theorem of line integrals, they gave us the connection saying that a conservative vector field and a path in, and path independence were really going to be one and the same thing. Then if we had something that was conservative, so our partial derivatives were going to be continuous, our second partial derivatives were going to be continuous, then Clairaut's theorem told us that these irritational vector fields, so remember what we meant by irritational, that the curl of that vector field was going to be zero. And so we almost got this triangle through here. We've kind of talked about Green's theorem and kind of what that, going through a little bit of the proof of that in some previous videos. And so now let's see if we can kind of end up closing the loop, so to speak, ha ha ha, um, uh, between the curl of a vector field and talking about path independence. So we want to do this by way of really getting in and digging into an example. And so if we've got this vector field y um, f being negative y over x squared plus y squared and x over x squared plus y squared, this thing's going to be defined on the x y plane everywhere except at the origin. And so if we compute the curl of this vector field, then just kind of um, remembering what the curl of the vector field looks like, it just ends up being this partial with respect to x of the second component minus the partial with respect to y of the first component. Well, computing those, in each case we get y squared minus x squared over x squared plus y squared squared. Those cancel and we get a curl of zero. So this thing sure enough is irrotational. Okay, so the curl of this thing is going to be zero. But now let's take the unit circle and we're going to orient that thing positively. So we're going to go counterclockwise on that thing. <clears throat> And so let's compute the integral over this loop of f dot dr. Well, we can parameterize that thing as cosine t sine t with t going from 0 to 2 pi. We compute our dr, so just our derivatives. Derivative of cosine gives us minus sine. Derivative of sine gives us cosine. We've got our dt on the outside. Then we take this parameterization and plug it into our vector field, which was our minus y over x squared plus y squared, x over x squared plus y squared. The x squared plus y squared, our trig identity, those just become 1. And so on the curve itself, we just end up with minus sine t and cosine t. Then doing f dot dr, we get minus sine cosine dotted with minus sine cosine. So sine squared plus cosine squared dt, we just get plain old dt. So now when we do the integration over this curve c of f dot dr, we get 0 to 2 pi of just dt, so we get 2 pi. Now if f were going to be conservative, then the fundamental theorem of line integrals, which is the same thing as path independence, and that's going to be equivalent to saying that if we do an integral over a loop, we better get zero out of that. Okay, so this seems to be going all right, but now here's another thing in the mix. If we take this function, um, the scalar function f of x, y being arctangent of y over x, we compute the gradient of that thing, we're getting minus y over x squared plus y squared plus x over x squared plus y squared. Wait a minute, that is our vector field that we started with. Hold on, what is going on in this case? that we compute this line integral over this loop. It should be zero, but we're getting two pi, but this thing's the gradient of some potential function. What's happening in this particular example? And so, 
you're probably asking the question to yourself, well, doesn't the, it being the gradient of a potential function mean that it is going to be conservative? And I'm really confused with this 2 pi over this line integral, and I ought to be getting 0. What is actually happening in this situation? And so that one, of course, is an often cl awesome cliffhanger that we'll leave that one. And let's see if we can clear up all of this mess in the next video. And I will see you guys.